methods is trade discounts. So we're moving into uh, the math and merchandising. So this is uh, the mathematics that we're going to use for mostly retail transactions. So we're looking at um, a company's buying some product, they're going to put some markup on it, they're going to uh, sell it to a customer, the price that they buy it for is less than the price they sell it for, and hopefully they're going to make some money on it. So math and merchandising is going to going to take a look at uh, the aspects of buying things, the aspects of paying for things, the aspects of how do we mark things up, whether we're making money off that transaction, and any overhead costs like rent and that sort of thing. So first thing we're going to take a look at is trade discounts. So trade discount, what we're looking for is uh, looking at this distribution chain. So we have manufacturers, these are companies that are making goods, uh, distributors, companies that are a lot of times importing products into the country. Uh, so we have a manufacturer that, that's creating things in, uh, in China and the United States. A distributor that's going to bring them in, get big containers off the ship, uh, warehouse those sort of things, possibly repackage them. Uh, distributors, these are uh, warehouses where we're going to uh, sell wholesale to, to a customer. Uh, you can think of uh, Costco kind of like a warehouse, so it's a big operation where there's lots of stuff and we're going to distribute that into smaller packages to send out to a retailer. A retailer, this is the company that meets with the customer, uh, does that initial face-to-face -face interaction with, with the products, so they get a bunch of goods, put on a shelf, put a price on it, uh, make it a nice environment, uh, put, put it on a shelf for them to buy and purchase, and then the consumer is the end result of the uh, distribution chain. So first I'll look at a the manufacturer. They're going to build products to sell. Uh, they may have a whole bunch of supply chain companies before them, getting raw materials, that sort of thing. But from our point of view, they're the ones that are making the product. Second thing, we have the distributor. These are managing the product, so they're doing support and for a large ge geographic area. So you might have one distributor in Canada for, uh, for a specific product. And the relationship with the manufacturer and the, the distributor are usually fairly tight. The distributor is only distributing one manufacturer's product for each category, and the manufacturer only sells to that distributor. A wholesaler, these are warehouses. This is where we might have one large warehouse in Vancouver. A lot of uh, product comes into, the, into that one spot. They break it up into smaller aspects to send it to a store. A uh, wholesaler is going to provide deal with a whole bunch of different cus customers. They may have interaction with the manufacturer, but they might have 10 different vendors of the same product, unlike a distributor and a retailer. They're making that, that point of sale of that product. So from our point of view, what does it, what does it mean? Well, the distribution chain um, sets the ultimate price that the, the consumer pays and provides a discount for, for the intermediaries. That's what, they, that's what they work with. So it's a less price. So we can see a less price. We've seen this uh, price to consumer. Uh, the manufacturer suggested retail price. You might see that. Sometimes there's even packaging that has a price on it. Okay. Uh, or if they're doing commercials and specials on TV or, or in the newspaper, then that's the price that it's going to be selling at. Uh, the regular selling price. These are all the same words that are basically what we're going to call the list price. The list price is the item, the, the cost that we're going to sell that item for to the customer. What we have is we have a net price as well. So each item in the supply chain, we're going to really talk about retailers. The retailers are going to buy at a net price and sell at a list price. So this is a price after receiving a trade discount. So the net price is what we're going to buy our product for, and the list price is what we're going to sell that product to the customer for. And how we usually calculate these is there's a rate of discount, which is the rate off the price that we're, we're getting. Okay. So our formula, our net price, the price that we pay, is the list price, the base amount, minus an amount of a trade discount. So this, in this case, is a cash, cash discount. So cash, cash, and cash. More likely what we're going to do is we're going to say the net price is a list price minus some discount rate. And so we calculate a discount rate times the list price. That's what's going to calculate our 
our cash amount. And so we have our standard formula, which is the net price which is the list price times 1 minus the discount. So here we say this, this is 1L minus DL, so it's 1 minus DL. So here we have a formula that says N equals L minus DL. We're just going to extract that to say well, it's 1L, so this is 1 minus DL. And that's our standard form. Okay. So as an example, real quick example based on our, our little formula that we have now, we want to find what the price to the retailer is of an umbrella with the manufacturer's suggested retail price of $19.99. So this could be an umbrella in a box, it's got $19.99 on the box, that's the price we're going to sell it for. We want to know what price we're, us as a retailer is going to get it for, so it receives a 21% day trade discount. So, Extract the information. So first of all, I want to uh, find the net price. Okay, this is the price to the retailer. Okay, extracting the data, our list price is 1999, and our discount rate is 21%. And our 21%. That's equal to zero. So you have a formula for this. Our formula is N equals L, 1 minus D. In this case, we just substitute the values in because it's already in the right format. Our net price is $19.99 times 1 minus 0.21, which is equal to $19.99. Calculator. And then we have 19.99 times 0.79 is equal 15.7921. Okay. So we'll make an English statement here that says price to the retailer. Lose some decimals. Fifteen point seven nine two one is fifteen dollars seventy nine cents. Fifteen dollars seventy nine cents. Well, we might also might get multiple discounts. So how that might come up is through our uh, our distribution chain, we have volume discounts. Uh, if we buy more than fifty thousand dollars in a year, we might get a discount, or ten thousand dollars in a month. Uh, by a Promotional discounts uh, at the end of certain uh, certain times a year, we might have a, a discount to get more product out into the market. Uh, might be advertising discounts. So if I do some advertising, the distribution chain is going to pay me back for some of that. Uh, this is actually very common. Uh, we do uh, like ads when uh, Save on Foods puts ads out into a flyer. Some of the retailers are going to, or some of the distribution chain is going to play for that. And we have seasonal discounts where this uh, this might be uh, after Christmas there's there's a sale on things, or after summer there's a sale on swimsuits, that sort of thing. So multiple discounts for, for different uh, different aspects. So to apply multiple discounts, we have a very similar formula, it's still n equals l, one minus d, but then we're going to keep multiplying on different discounts. 1 minus D1, 1 minus D2, 1 minus D3, 1 minus D4, depending on how many discounts we have. So things to notice. We do not simply add multiple discounts together. So I was at Macy's and I saw this. It was 50% off, plus an extra 40% off, and an extra 10% off. 10 plus 50 is 60 plus 40 is 100%. That would be free, but they're not actually free. Because you take the 10%, then you get that discounted amount, and another 50% discount, take that discounted amount, and another 40% discount, different discounted amount. So we can't just simply add them up. 
we have to take it off each one. So each discount only applies to the related net price after the previous discount. So this formula, where we can add them up, that does not work. Okay, we'll ignore this because this is something that we're not going to do and that will get you a wrong answer in this course. So, doing it this way, well, we took what we had before. The retailer also obtained a volume discount of 3% for selling so many umbrellas. So, what would be the net price? Well, we had a price before. I'll do the whole thing. In the beginning, we had our list price, which is $19.99. We had our first discount, which was 21%. And we're also going to get a second discount, and this time it's 3%. We have our formula, N equals L1 minus D1, 1 minus D2. Okay, there's only two discounts, so we only have to do two. So now we say our net price is $19.99 times 1 minus 0.21 times 1 minus 0 0.03. Remember the zero because it's only 3%. So that's 1999. Times 0.79, just like we had before, plus 0.96. Okay. Again, put that in the calculator. Get a value of 15.318. And again, we'll make a, an English statement at the end. So, after the volume discount, calculate a single equivalent rate. So if we had a bunch of discounts, we might get, say, so we've got 21%, we've got 3%, we might have another 1%, another 4%. We want to count one discount because we don't want to do all of that math every time. We want to calculate the single equivalent discount. But we've got a formula that says the discount equivalent is 1 minus all that calculation we used to do for discounts. Or we can convert the trade discount for $100 as a cash amount and then convert it back into a percent. I prefer this one, we will do both. So the first one, what is a single equivalent rate? Uh, a retail discount of 14%, a volume discount of eight, and a seasonal discount of 2%. Well, we have a formula. Uh, first of all, do the analysis. Do this in red again. D1 is equal to 14%. D2 is 8%, D3 is 2%, and we have our equivalent discount is 1 minus 1 minus 0.14, 1 minus 0.08. So just putting the discounts in there in the formula that we had. This is 1 minus 0 0.86 times 0 0.92 times 0 0.98. 1 minus, oh, go to calculator, 0 0.86 times 0 0.92 times 0 0.98. 1 minus 0. 
is convert that into a, a percentage, 22.46%. Well, we could do it a different way, and what we could say is we could do it as $100. So recall we had this, we had a net price, is our list price times 1 minus D1, 1 minus D2, So plug in the values again, we're going to assume that our list price is $100, so we're making an assumption of 100, 1 minus 0.14, 1 minus 0.08, 1 minus 0.02, okay, so what we get there is 100 times 0.6. If we do that, we say, well, 100 times 0.86 times 0.92 times 0.98, this is going to be 77, 53, 76. I'm going to carry a couple more decimals here. So what we're saying is, if we had a product that was going to sell for $100, we'd pay $77.54. So the, now to the discount, so if we said, instead of using the rate, if we said our net price is equal to our list price minus the cash discount, like we had in our first equation, we can say we know this 100, we know this 77, so we say our discount is equal to our list price minus our net, which is equal to the $100 list price minus 77, and again I'm going to carry extra decimals, 5376. So the amount of discount on $100 is $22.46 because we're carrying extra, which is exactly the same value as we had before. dollars because it's based on 100. We can add a percent on it. So either method, doesn't matter which one you do. I personally prefer this one because it's more mathematically tight than this one, but if that works for you, that's wonderful. So those trade, that's trade discounts. Do a bunch of uh, questions, a bunch of practice, and uh, we'll see you next chapter.